can you say your name and how you, uh, who are you and how would you define yourself? Okay, so my name is Jota Mombasa. I would define myself always, pro always in a provisional way, so I'll do it. <laughs> I'm a non-binary bisha from Brazil. Uh, I was born in the Northeast. I'm an artist. I work with performance arts and I also work with writing and I also try to, uh, to keep myself open and both in, in the way I, I think about myself as a person uh, and as an artist in order to like be able to put more language and more things together and to, I don't know, change. I'm a mutant. <laughs> I would define myself as a mutant. Um, you had a world premiere oh. here at IFFR. Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, what was the title? Can you describe what it is? Yeah, the title of, uh, it, it, it came the time when the lights of this epoch were lit everywhere. So it's a big title. I like it particularly. And uh, it was, um, it was some uh, reading performance. So I've been thinking a lot with reading as performance. And, and it was a reading performance of, of a text which makes uh, visionary fiction, a speculative uh, fictional story with uh, some, uh, like, some historical, historical material, historical narratives about like the proper uh, formation of what would be a Brazilian post-slavery subjectivity, especially in what concerns the, 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 the ways uh, this particular uh, formation of subjectivity has uh, erased, the try, has tried to erase the marks of, of of the history of blackness in Brazil. So it's pretty much a, a work about the formation of or the update of an anti-black uh, strategy of, of constitution of the this national citizen in Brazil that deploys both uh, historical material, uh, fiction, and some conceptual formulas on what is trauma or how can we define trauma how can we understand uh, the black genocide and the, the pervasiveness of black genocide in Brazil, the updates of black genocide in Brazil through history. And so it, it was something like this. And I also like this also GIF, this GIF piece that I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in, in working with GIFs because, it's, because I, I like the, the fact of repetition and the way it provides... Um, some telepathical forces into the into the into the visual work of the performance. So it's because of the repetition and the way it creates some sort of like um, I don't know a routine in which you need to get in in order to listen to the words, in order to be aware of your, the space around you. So I'm interested in this repetition and the way it it allows the people to get in the text I'm bringing. So when I think about reading as performance, I also think not just about reading, but about creating ways of, of making the reading like cross uh, bodies and cross subjectivities in a, in a more like dense and, and powerful way. I want to go and dissect the different elements that you're describing of now. Of course. The first, you're talking about the black genocide. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what that means in a Brazilian context? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means a very tricky, uh, a very tricky thing in Brazilian context. Although it's quite evident because, like in the last years, we have like so many like huge cases since uh, the Carandiru killing with 111 uh, people killed. Uh, in, in, in like 20 years, tw more than 20 years ago, you have it, but then you have in 2015 um, a car with five black uh, young men who, were, who had rented a car and were celebrating the first, uh, the first salary of one of them. Uh, this car got, uh, had like 111 uh, shots of the police. So I, I think it's quite interesting the way this 111 of Karandi, who died in Karandiru, like more than 20 years ago, and then in 2015 you have 111 shots. So I think it's it's a, it's very tricky the way it update the, the way like black genocide and the genocide of impoverished people and the necropolitics of Brazil ha, ha uh, updates itself through time and has and and leaves us this like small traces 
to think about it. So it, I think it's very tricky the way it happens in Brazil also because it's quite uh, invisible in a way. It's quite naturalized in a way. But in your performance you refer to a very specific historical genocide. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, I, I, I refer to uh, this statement made by um, João Batista de Lacerda, a Brazilian scientist that in the beginning of the last century uh, went to London to the Conference of the Races at UN, at Dubois, were, were there, W.E.B. Dubois were there, t were there too, so it was like probably a, yeah, a, a moment with a lot of perspective. So he went there and he did this statement in which he said that uh, in no more than 100 years, uh, with misery and miscegenation, blackness would be erased from Brazil, completely erased. So when I also think about like the black genocide in the post-slavery history, I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand this, this prophecy made by a scientist in a formal UN event in, in the beginning of the last century. And also in the performance, I also tried to connect it with, the, with Rui, Rui Barbosa, which was like a former min finance minister in Brazil, who two years after the, the formal abolition of slavery, which was the last one in the whole world in Brazil, uh, he just decreed the erasure, the burning of all the archives of slavery. So I'm, I'm, I try to think on how the burning of the archive, along with the prophecy of the complete, the complete erasure, formulates a, a, an anti-black project, a, a, a genocide project, which is at the same time uh, masked under the, the, the fiction of the racial democracy, mm -hmm. because a very important part of this genocide is this dissimulation, which miscegenation is a metaphor for or two. This thing of like the idea of like miscegenating in order to create a less blackened person, in order to uh, to make like a process of whitening, and it, it, it's quite interesting because it transforms white in a verb, so it's too white a country to make a country white and to make people white. So there's a sexual dimension that triggers me to think like it's, it's very awful in a way, the sexual dimension of miscegenation and the sexual dimension of, of the genocide. Because you want to erase through miscegenation. You want to erase through uh, this dilution of blackness into a white supremacist mixed country. So it's very, it's very, tr it's very hard to, to find the terms for explaining it. It always also fascinates me because when people think about Brazil, they almost honor Brazil because of its diversity and its mixing of races. But you really show a very different perspective to this. Not something only to be celebrated, but has a very problematic past. Mm. You are in your performance linking those historical things to a present uh, times. Why is that? Why do you use those different time frames in this story? Yeah, because as I, as I was saying before, I think I think it, it I think like it, the the update the updating mm -hmm. of of uh, anti-black uh, racism in Brazil, the updating of of those colonial ways of, of of organizing Brazil, it's 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 very important for understand where we are now, and where do we where, and where we go afterwards. So I think to deploy s different temporalities and different time frames is an interesting way of allowing yourselves to move outside of the linear fiction of time, which is a modern colonial fiction. The past, the present, the future. It's very, it's like it's within the, mo the mo modern thinking. And, and then like by bringing, overlapping different temporalities, we manage to create like this time travel epistemology that allows us to understand things in a different way because I have like the memories of the past here. I, I, know, I know that, that, that manifestations of the past are still manifesting themselves here mm -hmm. because I can see like, like the 111 shots that I was, thinking, that I was, I was saying before. 111 uh, men dead in Kalandiru, 111 shots made by the police against a car with five black young people. So what you have here? You have like the rep it's a small trace. And when we come from a country in which our, our archives were burned officially, we, we, everything we have is those small traces. So somehow this, uh, this attempt to overlap different time frames 
is a, is a way of like researching and looking for those traces that would allow us to uh, form, formulate what does it mean to be a citizen in Brazil post after slavery? What would mean to be a black citizen in Brazil post slavery? In a country that celebrates black, black as object, while erases and, and, and kills, lit quite literally, black as subject. Can you explain how that uh, black subject is very visible, but at the same time invisible? Yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, the, the, black, the, black, the black body is quite visible when you think about the culture of carnival and the culture of public parties and, and the, the body of the Brazilian as something that is like the, 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 the very racist fiction of the mulata, who is the one black woman, actually black mixed woman who is very sexy. And so you have like a whole objectification of black body that creates a hyper visibility to this black body as an object of, for consumption of hegemonic cultures, both Brazilian and international. And, and it's quite visible as an object, but as a subject, as someone that elab elaborates from their own positions, as, the, as a perspective, as a way of envisioning justice, of envisioning democracy, of envisioning society, of envisioning what arts, of being artists, for instance. So all those things are completely erased. So we have like a lack of, like, we have like literally a lack of representation in the art scene, a lack of representation in the political scene. So all those public spaces in which uh, a body gains consistency as a subject because it speaks, have a position, have an opinion, is saying some, something. All those spaces, blackness is completely erased. But in the, the space of the fake celebration, the celebration of the object, of the body for consumption, then you have like a black representation in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, it's quite tricky, this, this game of visibility, mm -hmm. in which you are simultaneously quite visible because everyone look at, looks at you mm -hmm. in the streets, for instance. You are visible, you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot go inside the supermarket without being followed. It's about visibility, because you cannot just pass the, the door of the supermarket as a normal citizen. Mm -hmm. you, they will follow you because they see you as black. But at the same time, you are not the person who's, who, who who say anything like that 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 matters in a in a in a social hegemonic context. So it's very tricky and complex. How do you using all those layers and time frames? It it uh, sums up to the current situation in mm -hmm. Brazil. Can you describe how you see this in that historical perspective, but also in the futuristic aspect mm -hmm. that you're. Um, I, let's say I see with no surprise, which doesn't mean that I'm that I see like ju uh, that, that I see with, without without being being uh, like caught by it. It affects me really really hard what what we are seeing in Brazil right now, for instance. And but I see with no surprise also because what we, what we have we have those traces. They were telling us those traces are whispers. Because I, the thing with, the, with like reading the time frames is a way of like predi somehow predicting the future, not just as a magic thing, but as a, uh, as, as every magic, as a certain, si every magic has a certain scientific dimension or a procedure. So it's a way of like reading the, the way the thi things happen through time as a way of like trying to read what's going to happen. So I think what is happening now with the new president and the fascist rising and the completely mad crisis of masculinity because the men are going to the streets to beat people, to kill people just because they, are, they feel entitled to it. So you have all those like terrible and brutal things going on. But we also have like a, a recent process in which the, we were listening to the whispers we were seeing we, we saw we saw the law anti-terrorist being signed by Duma just like a few months before her impeachment so the continuity of a process that leads to this particular moment we saw every like the indigenous movement have been fighting in Brazil for like for 
forever for, since since the beginning but um in the, in the in this like the 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 beginning of the century the indigenous movements were fighting in brazil very very with, uh, with a lot of like intensity because they were saying we need to be respected this is our land and and even like in the leftist government it wasn't visible so we knew it would come it would come a time that, that's also the title of, of, of the, the performance, in which the lights of this epoch are lit everywhere, in the, in the sense that we cannot look to Brazil now and not see the way it like updates colonial forces. It's like they are killing indigenous people, they are killing black people, they are killing tra tra transgender people, they are like reenacting coloniality again and again. So we cannot like look and not see but before we had the traces, we had the whispers, we had like the, we, 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 we saw the signals and we were trying to say. So I kind of like look at, at to this present moment with no surprise. And yet with, uh, with pain and, and I don't know, trying to be aware of what's happening now and what we can, what's going to happen in the future and how can we cross it? How can we survive it? How can we cross this, these terrific times? to reach another, another time frame in which you can breathe. How you are uh, world premiering, you have a world premiere, you had a world premiere of this performance on an international f film mm -hmm. festival, Rotterdam. How does film can contribute to this, the shift of this situation or contribute to a visibility and uh, um, a kind of counter or go in dialogue with this update? Mm -hmm. I think film. I think film is a, is a very important strategy mm -hmm. for us to use because it's also a way of like, like, thinking about the erasure of the the burning of those archives. What can film make for burned archives? What can we make through film, for uh, for not historian but for recreating archives, and creating the uh, like, sharing a, a a perspective, sharing a position. So I think it, I think film can really do a, a very important a very important work of, of like also defining what on how to be visible which is not the same thing of like letting visibility take all of your your, your life mm -hmm. because like there's this editing thing of a film which is important so you you create a frame in which you render something visible and something so we can also protect ourselves because we can make our narratives visible while we protect ourselves of those like uh, of that other form of visibility that I was trying to talk about earlier. So uh, even in the performance, the thing that I have like the, the gif in the front, and it's dark, and then the gif is like making its work, and I'm outside of the frame. I want to be outside of the frame because there's something that I, w I need to preserve. Mm -hmm. So it's important to 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 put my body there, to put to think with my body, and I'm thinking with my body because my voice comes from a place which is my body. My vo my, my body is present everywhere through my voice, mm -hmm. but I'm also trying to protect myself because my body is exposed. Bodies like mine in Brazil now they are exposed. We don't need to expose them more. We can we can operate in visibility in order to make the narratives visible while protecting the the very life. Because that it's threatened in Brazil right now. It was it has been threatened, threatened in Brazil for a long time. Like the black body, the black queer body. It's it's not safe to to be it in Brazil, and so we need to come somehow operate with visibility in order to protect it while making our narratives visible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. It was a great pleasure.